Hello, my name is Hannah Wixey and I'm studying a PhD here at the University of South Wales. My PhD is under the bracket of sports psychology and I'm also working as a behavioural support for a charity called the School of Hard Knocks and I'm a probationary sport and exercise scientist under the bracket of bases. So my job, my PhD and my sort of general working life is all sort of around sport performance, um, looking after people's sort of mental health and wellbeing, those are sort of my my passions, my interests. Um, it's really lovely because everything's sort of merged into one. So I get to use my PhD and um, my degrees and like my work in general. It all informs one another. So yeah, it's, it's actually really beneficial that they all sort of merge into one. Um, I chose to do a PhD because I really wanted to refine my skills as a researcher. Um, that's what I want to, to do going forward. I would like to do more research. So doing a PhD and really immersing yourself into that, into the role of being a researcher, um, teaches you lots of valuable skills. Um, as I said, I work as a behavioural support for a charity called School of Hard Knocks. We look at um, helping young people stay in school, so they're the children normally at risk of most exclusion in school. Um, and we work alongside them using sport as a tool, in particular rugby, to help them stay in school and my role is mainly to do one-to-one -one support, um, so building confidence, resilience, managing relationships, checking in with their well-being. So I'm just going to talk you through my PhD today, um, answer a few questions which hopefully you'll find quite interesting. Um, the first question would be like, well, what do you enjoy most about doing a PhD? Um, I absolutely love immersing myself into this one chosen topic. I found it really interesting from day one. I'm now my my third year. I'm hoping to, to have completed it within four years. Um, it's really it's really exciting to be able to just choose one thing to go right. I really want to focus on that, um, and that's what a PhD allows you to do. It allows you to hone your skills as a researcher and really immerse yourself into the literature and speaking to lots of different people. So a lot of my research is is people focused. Um, I've done an interview study, a questionnaire study, and I'm planning a final study now. Um, so I guess the, the best part for me is, or was, completing the interview study. I absolutely loved that. It was a really big project. I ended up interviewing 85 people for the study. Um, and I met so many different people in that process of obviously recruiting. You know, I recruit, tried to recruit hundreds of people, but ended up with the 85, which was brilliant. Um, so actually interviewing those people and hearing their their stories as to why they decided to withdraw from education and the things that impacted on them. Because obviously we were particularly interested in the actual impact that well-being had on their decision to withdraw from education, or even some people obviously stayed and they completed. Um, but out of the 85, the 85 people had actually withdrawn. So it was really interesting to hear those different um, those different reasons why. And it's quite nice when you when you interview people. Um, sometimes you just click with people, don't you? And you, you get on with them really well. Um, so that that was probably the best part for me. Um, and along those sort of lines, that actually, when, when you interview people, it, it's you're almost being trusted to tell that person's story. And which I really hope that I've been able to do through the research so far um, is actually explain why these people decided to leave or these learners decided to leave from education. But you know, being being trusted to do that, I felt was quite a quite a big opportunity, and it was um, really exciting. I have also really enjoyed working alongside the FE College. I've been lucky enough to to work quite closely with the with the four colleges who are actually involved in the research, getting to know sort of some of the staff. Um, and the buildings and just the general set of FE College. I've been really lucky in that sense. I've got quite a good relationship with, with the four colleges that I'm doing the research for, um, which has really, really helped actually, because they've been, they've been so helpful, um, especially like recruiting participants can be quite difficult and quite draining. Um, I couldn't have collected the amount of sort of um, the questionnaire data, especially I couldn't have collected all those surveys alone. Um, without the the staff really pushing for for the research, so that's been you know that been been very valuable. Um, for me, why why is the research needed? Um, the research for me is so important because you know everyone has everyone has well being, everyone has mental health. Um, it's not this distant invisible thing that we can put a plaster on and hope that things get better. Um, 
everyone has it, whether it's sort of social well-being, physical well-being, mental well-being, ev everyone has it. So um, it's, it's, does it have an impact on someone's decision to stay in education? That's what we're hoping to find out. Um, you know, research does indicate that well-being affects many parts, many aspects of our life. So why aren't we looking at more detail at a massive part of our life? I think, you know, I'm, I'm 27 years old and still in education. So education is a massive part of our life. So if well-being is having an impact on someone's decision to withdraw from education, then that's something that we need to be aware of and we need to, to manage. Um, which is exactly what the college, uh, you know, that they want. They want. They want to know the answer to this question so that they can actually do something about it and to help manage students' well-being far better. Which is, which is great. Another reason why I think the UKHD is actually so important at this time is that actually the the prominence of well-being at the moment is is very topical. Lots of people are talking about it, um, and actually, if we can do some research in this area to better understand why students are inclined to withdraw from education. It just better positions FE colleges to actually manage that and do the right thing because really wellbeing or learner wellbeing is, is so critical um, as, as humans our wellbeing is so critical and surely I, I do think institutions have a duty of care to um, whether it's their, their staff or their students in, in any situation, any, any, any workplace. Um, I do think there's a duty of care to the, the individuals you employ or you look after to manage and look after their wellbeing. Um, so it, it, it is, it, it's nice to know that um, actually the research is really important. Um, I, I certainly feel like it's important and, and topical at the moment and it hopefully will go forward, it will actually be, be used and it, will, and it will be helpful for, for the colleges and for the, for the students who attend those colleges and, and the staff. It just, it be, you know, better positions at FE colleges to actually look after their students and give them a far more enjoyable experience whilst they're in education. So right now I'm obviously working from home like many other people. Um, obviously we've got a lovely office that um, Sports Park USW, but we're all working from home. You see, this is my at-home office. Um, I actually share it, but it's quite it's quite nice to be here. I, I, I do quite well managing myself in my own time. Um, I am, as I said, I'm in my sort of third year. I'm hoping to be wrapped up within sort of four years. So hopefully next September. So September 2022. That is my that's my aim. That's my goal to be to be finished by then. Um, I have, as I've said, I've, I've completed an interview study, which was my first study, which is, which I think was probably my favourite study right now. Um, I've collected all my data for my second study, which is a questionnaire study, which is in particular looking at the does what you know does um, academic resilience and well-being have an impact on on learners. So we we distributed a questionnaire over um, an academic year. So we did it in September, the January, and the May tracking students across the academic year, which was, again, such a great opportunity. We tracked, you know, over 200 students by the end, 200 students, three three time time points to actually identify whether there are any pinch points for wellbeing. That's the aim. So I've collected all the data for that, and I'm now in the process of actually analysing that data, um, which I've got to, I'm, I'm so thankful for everyone who's helped me with that, because actually I've never been a, a quantitative researcher before, I've always been qualitative. So doing a big questionnaire study, um, I was a little bit uh, anxious about because um, I'm at that stage now where I've got to analyse data and um, so I've asked lots of people to help me. Um, so that's another really good thing about actually doing a PhD is that you meet so many different people and, and different researchers and, and professors who are, who are really willing to help you, um, which is, you know, I, I can't say thank you enough to everyone who's offered to support me throughout this process. Yeah, so I, I'm analysing data for that at the moment and then hoping to start my third study by sort of the summer, so maybe like August time, look at my look at my third study, which I um, haven't fully decided yet what, what that's going to look like. Um, I'm hoping it'll become it'll be quite an organic study that will come from the results of study two, um, which, which we really love being. I'm excited to sort of plan that and, and get on with that. And then um, obviously lo lots of writing and reading. Um, yeah, so... In terms of like what what are the high points of 
doing a PhD. I've mentioned quite a few of them already. So the in, in, interviewing people has been um, probably my favourite part of the PhD process that I've managed to meet so many different people and be totally immersed in this one subject. But other high points are things like getting some really good feedback on your writing. You know, um, it sounds so simple, but you could send in a draft and perhaps you haven't written for a while. And perhaps you've been, you know, when you're collecting data and you, you tend to read a lot more and you're immersed in actually more the practicality. So when you, when you write and then perhaps you have a few months where you're not writing much, to actually get some feedback and, you know, your, your supervisor go, oh, you know, your, um, your writing's really improved here or you're writing really well at the moment or, you know, keep going. But things like that, that they're huge, huge confidence boost as a student um, to know that you are improving because it is a process of actually becoming a, a researcher, isn't it? So it's nice to know that you, you are improving. Low points. Um, I think adjusting first of all to working from home completely, um, that perhaps was a bit of a low point. Um, not not the lowest, but I mean, I'm fully adjusted now and I quite enjoy working from home. I mean, I'd love to get back into the office and see everyone, but it is quite nice being home. Um, for me, the lowest point was probably collecting the questionnaire data. Um, I, you know, at the start I was really ambitious and I wanted to sort of 500 students across the academic year and I was like, yeah, I can do this and you keep pushing and pushing and when the, the numbers just don't come in, you sort of realise that it's like totally outside of your control and that, that's quite difficult sometimes because you think, well, why aren't people completing it? Um, but you just sort of have to sit back and go, I can't, can't control other people and what, what they do or what they don't do. And actually by the end of it, I had over 200 students that were trapped for the academic year, which is, which is brilliant anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so that, that was probably the lower point, is like recognising that you can't control certain things, like, like people you can't get them to do questionnaires, which in, you know, as a big picture, it's not that big a deal really, but in your little PhD bubble, sometimes that can feel like a really big deal. Um, which is quite nice actually that I have a, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm a full-time student, but I also work. So when I go to work, it sort of resets me and makes me go, actually, it's not that big a deal. I didn't get 500 students to complete a questionnaire three times. Like it, you sort of, it makes you um, put things into perspective a little bit, which is, which is good. Um, it's really rewarding when you finally get something. So like I was saying about the quantitative research, I, I've really, really, I've really struggled with some parts of it because I just didn't understand it. And actually when someone sits down and explains it to you and just really in layman's terms and suddenly like, oh, I get it now. Um, that's a really good feeling. And recognizing that sometimes not, your supervisors don't always get it either, um, which feels like I'm calling out my supervisor. It's not. It's like nice to know that like you know your supervisor are also human too and at one one stage they didn't get it either so we're all we're all learning um i'm certainly learning a lot at the moment so yeah that feeling of like okay i get it now or, you know I, I get the story i'm trying to tell here with the phd like i'm trying i finally got that sort of golden thread going all the way through it and i'm like i understand so that feeling is great and it's really really rewarding and you sort of get to a point where you feel a little bit more like like a researcher which is obviously the, the whole point of it. Um, and with that in mind, the actual, for me, my main goal of completing PhD is to become a researcher. I, I really enjoy lecturing and teaching. Um, I really enjoy working as a sport and exercise scientist, but you know, I love doing research. That, that's why I, why I decided to do a PhD. Um, I just find it so rewarding finding, finding out new things and reading and just really getting into one topic and fully understanding it as well as best as you can at that, at that time. So that's my goal, is actually to yeah, become a researcher by the end of the, the four years, which I guess my PhD is perfect training for. <laughs>